So we're here with Chris. Chris is a client of ours. Uh, he's been on our schedule to get his Bora Boil in. So you guys stay tuned. You're about to see an 85 pound, four and a half month old puppy, 85 pounds. So he's a, he's a big boy. I haven't seen him yet. I've only seen pictures. The pictures I've seen, he's beautiful. He's in this truck right here. And he's on the schedule to train with us uh, for our board and train program because he's got some social issues starting to pop up. And that's actually what we're here for is potentially a private lesson. And so he's brought a hungry puppy. We got the good treats and we'll see if we can't kind of break him a little bit out of his shell. So stay tuned. We're about to pull him out. Well, he is a big boy, isn't he? So what's he about to be 200 pounds at full grown maybe? So your puppy fear stage shouldn't last longer than about a week. All right, we slid over here so we're a little closer to our truck and we're gonna be pulling him out. We can't let him continue to get reps of running away, the bad guy goes away. Um, so he's gonna come out and we're gonna make him face his fears a little bit and see how he brought him out of the truck. That's the way to do it. Don't let your dog or your puppy jump out. It's not good for the shoulders or the hips. And let's uh, just get him off the hot black asphalt. Little stressed, little stressed. You can see the tail down. If it was longer, it could be curled under him, but just let him be a dog. He wants to pee or whatever. I'm gonna get uh, upwind of him so that the odor of this hot dog should be hitting him uh, from over here. Let's see if his nose picking up on that a little bit. Could be tracking that smell a little bit. Wind swirling a little bit. Dogs, again, see their world through their nose. So yes, he's seeing some visuals. I also want him to be able to smell me and ideally smell that I have hot dogs, but the wind keeps shifting on me. So he skipped, he skipped breakfast, so he should be hungry. And it's, you know, 1.30, so it's just too stressed to eat. So that is definitely a sign of stress. And so there's a couple of ways. Yeah, he's trying to basically Let's get back in the truck and get out of here, Dad. This is too much, too much too soon. Mind you, it's not that crazy. Um, but you gotta start somewhere. So, this is what we saw a lot of, not that this is COVID times per se, but we saw a lot of COVID dogs um, in these last 12 months or so. Uh, dogs that didn't get out and didn't socialize. And then all of a sudden, a year and a half later, they've been let out of the house and they're seeing a garbage truck go by for the first time and they think it's a dinosaur coming to get them. So, We'll just, if he doesn't want the food, that's fine. He's gonna have to face his fears another way. And we're just gonna do what we call a little bit of a grinder session. We're gonna let the heat take over. We're gonna let that beautiful South Florida sun work him a little bit. He'll be a little too tired to be scared. That would be the hope. Let's test it out, let's see. We're not gonna do anything too crazy. We're gonna ease him into it as best we can, but he's got to get used to it. And there's only one way to get used to it, and that's being around it. So we're gonna just let him get that exposure that he needs. And we hope by the end of this, uh, let's call it maybe about 20 minutes or so, we'll see how it plays out. Of course, we have thunder. So he's getting the whole, the whole thing today. Let's see how he does. That's all I can tell you. We can't make no promises. We just got to keep working on it. We don't give up. Now, if you feel bad for the puppy, you say, oh, pobrecito, let's put him up. It's just going to get worse. And so we're not going to do that. It's going to be a little bit of tough love. If that's what we need to do, he's got to face his fears. It's time to make it happen, right? So let's do it. So for those who don't know, these dogs are what? And I'm no breed expert on them, but bred to either ward off or actually fight lions or hunt them. So I don't know if it takes just one of them to, to, to fight off a lion or, or a pack of them, but he's unbelievably strong. 85 pounds that low to the ground. Uh, I'm not weak, but he's even hooked up on a prong. Again, it's not the prong that's gonna fix this. It helps. It helps, but Lord, he pulls. Cause, and he's pulling because he just wants to go back to daddy, go back home but we gotta let them get used to it. So one of the things we're gonna actually do for this Mr. Lion Hunter here is bring out what we call a role model dog. Now typically a role model dog would be a mature male uh, or female is fine that is very confident to set the tone for him. Typically someone that he looks up to, if you will, a dog that he already knows. Uh, we don't have that handy because I don't have a dog that he knows here. We just so happen to bring two puppies. But those puppies, because we've been working with them for the last six weeks, are uber confident. Didn't start out that way. But we're going to bring the most confident of those two. That's little Mo. She's a female. She's an alpha. Um, she's very rambunctious when she wants to play. I want to see how he does with her, number one. But number two, once we settle her down, I want him to see that she is confident and she is taking food. And if it's good enough for her, it should be good enough for him. 
So what I'd like to do is you just walk her and I'm gonna trail behind you. The best way for puppies or dogs to meet is to give them a job. He doesn't know any jobs right now, but he should trail behind her anyways, just out of curiosity. I would hope he wants to kind of smell what she's got going on, so. If he looks at me, I'm gonna let him know I like that. He's smelling her a little bit. That's the first time since he's reverted back to this behavior. Very much associated with daddy. So it'll be easier when you're not here, but you stick around. Let me catch up to you. Imagine if we can't get this under control at 85 pounds, add 100 pounds to it, it it'll be, nobody will be able to walk him. Nobody. We're gonna go ahead and hook her up to her Martingale flat. We don't really need it. And we're gonna combine her prong collar with that prong collar and hopefully make this work. Cause what he has on right now is a, probably a three, or 3.2 millimeter Herm Springer, there's nothing wrong with that, but this is not the Martingale style prong collar. And long story short, we don't have nearly enough bite on this unit. He's pulling with all of his might, and this prong collar is doing little to nothing. And that's because it lacks the action of the Herm Springer. Uh, and also it's a little, these are thicker. All right, so they have a little less bite. All right, so now we're gonna fit them with a, like a, a, a much better version of the prong collar. They're both Herm Springers, except this one's a little more serious. As you can see, this is very stressful work just with a puppy. This shouldn't be like this with a four and a half month old puppy. What's not helping is there's a little bit of thunder in the background, but we gotta start working on it now. Take this, Cole. We have little to no control with this prong. This one, we should be all right. He's already feeling a little more bite on that one. What I wanna do is double hook him. Luckily, we got this chain here, so that'll be nice. All right, now we got a little more control. No, just leave it there. Very stressful. A uh, little bit of thunder in the background, not very loud at all. And he went from like stressed out a level, from one through 10, he was like at a five or a six. He was at like an eight. Um, gotta get this fixed. We gotta get this fixed. So we're gonna go into the pet store. Hopefully he does better. Let's we'll see how it goes. All right, guess the breed. I was personally thinking English Mastiff, but I could be wrong. Nope, try again, what do you think? I said Mastiff. No, oh, I'm, um... She said English oh, Mastiff. Oh, said Turner and Hoops Dog. Nope, that would be a French Mastiff. Oh. But no. So it is a Borable. Am I saying it right? Borable. B-O-E-R-B-O-E-L. Lion Hunters. Yeah, he's very pretty. He's just socials are, are not right. I mean, I'm hoping it's fear stage, but man, it shouldn't be lasting this long. So... We just asked the owner to step outside because a lot of his stress is associated or enabled, I should say, with the owner. It's just my belief. He wants to go to the owner because the owner is the one that lets him get back in the truck and run away from his problems. Uh, now he has to deal with me. Uh, we're not gonna run away from our problems. We're gonna face him. His name is Macho. He better start acting it. So he just needs to toughen up a little bit. I would say already just, it's already a little better. He stopped, he's been lunging like on the regular every 30 seconds. Now, once we go over there and he sees that daddy's not around, he's gonna have to get used to some new rules, which is stop pulling like a Looney Tune on the leash. And ultimately, what's gonna be the success for him is uh, what we call obedience. Obedience, give him a job to do and he won't be so stressed out, all right? If we give him a job to do, such as a sit, good boy, he cannot run away. Because in order for him to run away, he would have to break the sit, which means he stopped doing his job, and that's not good. He's been given a job to do, and he's gonna do that job, and he's gonna do very well at that job. I'm gonna make him a champ at sit stays, down stays, healing, looking at me, staying on a place board, whatever it is, he's gonna be excellent at that. <laughs> See how he broke the sit? So we say, nope, sit stay again, right? Now we're fast tracking it. He's got a, by luck, some dogs come pre-installed with a little bit of leash pressure skills. Um, also, I'm you know, pretty handy with a leash, but we're able to cheat him into a sit and ask him to maintain this, you know? And this will progress and he'll be able to hold it longer under bigger and bigger distractions. So that's the name of the game. But my boy needs a lot of work, a lot of work. So I, I think he's getting better already just in, as the time is passing. But you're gonna see this pattern of behavior, bad behavior, continue to resurface, right? It's kind of like uh, we're trying to, teach him to stop smoking cigarettes. But he's like, 
Oh, I just need to. I just need to run away. I just need to run away and go have that smoke. The smoke to him is to hide in in the truck or, or go back home. This is better behavior, right? Kind of succumbing to it. Like, okay, well, I can't run away anymore. I might as well just stay here and take it. Much better than than. I can't tell you how hard he was pulling on the leash. Unbelievable. So this is where I would like to pay a dog for this, and let's see if what he thinks of it. No, still too stressed to eat. I will leave it here in case he wants to eat that. Sometimes, there we go. Did he eat it? Good. So a little bit of fear of taking food from hands. Uh, we gotta work through that. Maybe now that he's had a taste, there's a chance he'll take it from my hand in the next couple ones. So I'll put that right there for him. Interesting, right? Takes it from the ground, not from my hand. But now I'm in a jackpot. You don't want five of these? I know you do, buddy. That's right. You're tricking him into it. It's worth the risk, so to speak. It's worth the risk. I'm afraid of tarantulas. But if you put a $100 bill in a little tarantula case, I might, I might go ahead and go for it. Not for $1. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. So we're going to give him that $100 bills right here and say, hey, it's worth it, man. Go into the gauntlet. Oh, that's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. Now we're gonna ask if they can do it. If he's taking food from me, maybe he'll take food from them as long as it's high enough value. So let's go over here. Look at that now, see? I'm telling you now, the, the owner wasn't able to make this happen, not yesterday he couldn't do this. Now here we are, wash, rinse, repeat. If he can take 10 pieces from her today, then maybe Tomorrow, he'll be happy to take one piece. He'll be happy to get pet, right? He's already getting better. He's eating. That's, that's good. Uh, when the dog's not eating, they're too stressed to eat, so. Pretty cool dog. You can see how we have to wash, rinse, repeat this with different people, different locations, bring a hungry dog, bring the high value treats. If we can try one more time, I'm interested how quickly he takes those foods now. And again, big payday for him if he does it. Big payday, hopefully he goes right from your hand. Yes, sir. See how he's getting, it's almost a cheat, right? We're hacking the system. We're making him understand like people are wonderful. Nothing to be afraid of out here. Uh, instead of the boogeyman lurking around the corner, it's raining, it's raining the good stuff. It's raining dollar bills, y'all. All right, we're gonna continue to wash, rinse, repeat this. I think it's gotten long enough. He's done pretty well. We'd like to leave on a high note and um, maybe we'll get the owner to, to see what he thinks. If we can get her to feed him on camera. Uh, it's a friend of ours that we just happen to run into, and uh, we'll see if they want to feed uh, Mr. Macho and see how he does. We'll see how he does. He took food from her twice. We had to cheat him into it, and by cheating him into it, he won't take one piece of food. Well, he'll take the food off the ground. From your hand, he's like, nah, too risky. But then I said, okay, what if I make it worth your while? And I put a fat stack of food, and he's like, nah, let me go. Is dad watching? No, he's not. Let me go. Let me go. All right, so. Now what I'm interested to see is if with you around, with your presence, well, he'll take food from someone. Do we have any volunteers want to feed him food? So we have to make it really worth his while. So let's start with that. Bunch of food. I'm going to ask him to get into somewhat of a sit. Not that he really knows it, but he's making it work. Let me put these away. Can I give him the whole thing? Yeah, if you can. Let's see if he takes it. He's looking at Dad. Like, come save me. Okay. Okay. Let's just finish this and we're almost done. We can present it again and see if he's interested at all. Mm -hmm. Getting those free ones, getting those free ones. Daddy's around, different picture, right? I think if you weren't here, well, I already know. He took food from me, he took food from her. I don't think it's a guy-girl thing. It's a, Daddy, save me. Oh, so we need to get him out of here. We need to recondition him to a bunch of stuff is what we need to do. Um, just a matter of if you want to do it yourself over the next few weeks or if you want us to take over. If you want to do it yourself, we'll, we'll give you some ideas of how to do it. Uh, but just simply swapping out to this prong collar is going to make a world of difference. So, so yeah, we got to get ahead of it now. We're not going to wait for him to get older and he's gonna, confidence isn't going to just come out of nowhere. We got to build it, okay? Thank you all very much for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe. And to avoid having issues like this with your puppy, get them out there, socialize them. And we would also recommend you check out our DIYK9.com training courses. We have our Unleashed Puppy courses, an entire section on the importance of socialization with your young puppy. So we'll see you in the courses.